Hey, this is Emily at Oz Inflatable Kayaks looking at the Advanced Frame, the Advanced Frame Sport and the Advanced Frame Ultralight. Now these three kayaks kind of look very similar. I mean, they're obviously different colors, but they're the same length, they're the same width and the design looks pretty well the same. So why did Advanced Elements create three different kayaks? Well, I'm going to show you the, the differences between the three. There's no, not necessarily ones that are better than others. It's more a case of pros and cons and what's important to you as an individual. So the first really obvious point is the weight. So the Advanced Train, which is the original model, weighs 16 kilograms. Now that's not too bad, so I'm a pretty small person and I had an Advanced Train for many years before it was stolen by some loser out of my garage, damn them. Um, so I had one for many years and I was quite easily able to pick this up and take it down to the water. Uh, so 16 kilos, not too bad. But if you want something really nice and easy, the Advanced Train Sport is around about 11 and a half kilograms. So that becomes really nice and easy to pick up and carry down to the water. But if you're really strapped for space and or uh, weight, and you just really want something lightweight, you don't want to be lifting something heavy, the Advanced Train Ultralight is eight kilograms. So it is half the weight of the Advanced Train, even though it's about the same size. So that's the first huge difference between the three. If you know straight away, that you want something lightweight then this this feature alone will get you most of the way there in deciding which is right for you now what's also different is the carrying capacity of the three so in terms of what weight can they handle and also how small do they pack up so the regular advanced frame can handle a whopping 136 kilograms now that is either a large person or a large person plus a bunch of gear so there are uh, customers that take this one on multi-day expeditions because it's got 136 kilograms for a weight capacity and you can see the bungee on the deck here and there's D-rings on the back so you can load up with gear. It's great for that option. Um, the pack dimension 76 by 43 by 25 centimeters. It's sort of hard to imagine but it's about the size of a, a medium sized suitcase if that helps. Next we have the sport. So the sports capacity goes down a little bit and that's simply because it's got a single main air chamber instead of a double main air chamber and I'll, I'll show you a little bit more about that later. Uh, so it, it can take a little bit, however for most people it, it's still totally fine. You know most people that I'm selling to are well under that 113 kilo limit. Uh, sometimes people add a dog into that mix for this one because it's got a nice wide open cockpit and sometimes they add a bit of gear but usually 113 is totally fine. In terms of the dimension, 76 is the same as the Sport 40, uh, Advanced Train, 43 is the same as the Advanced Train, but the 20 is a bit, a bit smaller, so it, it folds a bit flatter than the Advanced Train. Then we have the Ultralight. So this one comes down to 102 kilograms, still fine for most people I sell to. If I had a big guy with a dog, uh, I'd be getting a bit worried here, but for 90% of people I'm selling to, if they're not going on an altered expedition, 102 kilos is still fine. But in terms of the dimensions, it's actually slightly longer this kayak, 79 by 46, so slightly wider as well, but then it's only 15 centimeters deep. And the reason they've been able to do that is it's quite a different material. This is made from uh, polyurethane tarpaulin in the hull instead of PVC. So what you get is a, a much more packable fabric. It's less stiff, if that makes sense, more flexible, and it packs down a bit flatter. So that's something to consider. However, one of the main things that's going to uh, help you to decide is whether you need the combing. So as you can see, the Advanced Frame has this inflatable combing and it has a narrower cockpit. If we look at these pictures, you can kind of see these are all the same length, remember, and the same width. But this one looks a bit longer. It's really because it has a, sh a smaller cockpit with that combing. So the inflatable combing allows you to attach a spray skirt. See, he's wearing a spray skirt there. That means that this kayak is classed for open ocean, the other two are not. The other two don't have inflatable combing, they've just got little foam areas around here. Uh, so they have some combing and it will protect you against some splash, but you couldn't put a spray skirt on it if you needed to. So if you know you're going to be exploring some cold climates, maybe down in Tasmania, I get a lot of customers that go paddling down in Tasmania, uh, for example, or you just want to go out in winter and stay warm, or you know you're going to be doing a bit of open ocean and you want the option to get a skirt later, you know, if that's something you want to explore, then the Advanced Frame is going to be a good choice for you. Okay, um, and also, I mean, just to emphasize that weight difference, this is Jeff. Jeff was well into his 70s when he got this kayak and he had no problem lifting this one. So when we say 16 kilos, it's one of the heavier ones, but it's certainly not unachievable. And he loved that one. 
And that's me. Like I said, I'm a pretty small person, but I was able to pick this kayak up. No problem. I had one for many years before it got stolen. A little bit bitter about that still. Uh, multiple air chambers. So that's the other difference. One of the reasons the advanced stream is heavier is it actually has two main chambers. There's a wall where the red and blue meet there that goes all the way down the, the main um, inner tube. And so you have two main chambers keeping your um, air. Now that adds weight, but it also improves the rigidity a bit and improves the uh, weight capacity. So that's why you have 136 kilos on this one and you don't have that on the sport. But they all have the aluminium rib frame design. So they've all got a piece of aluminium in the bow and the stern that's sort of U-shaped and it really cuts through the water. So the one in the bow cuts through the chop and the one at the stern acts like a bit of a skeg and draws the water behind. So these two have the aluminium rib in the bow and the stern. Uh, what do they have in terms of air chambers? Well, this one has an inner tube, so it's just one circular tube and it has one main chamber there to set up. Now that means this is the quickest one to set up. So the Sport is fantastic for quick setup. Four minutes and 10 seconds is all it takes from in the bag to on the water. I timed myself doing it once. So it's excellent. The Advanced Room Ultralight is actually quite a different design. It has uh, two side chambers. So that is one chamber and then this is the other chamber. Um, and again, this was purely all about trying to get that weight down. It's not necessarily better or worse because it's got uh, the two main two chambers instead of one. Uh, but it, you wouldn't know by looking at it, would you? <laughs> um, now, in terms of the weight and the performance, so the Advanced Room is the best on the water. This one, the Advanced Room Sport is the second best and the Advanced Room Ultralight is the third best. And what I mean by that is it's a question of momentum and maneuverability. So the weight, although it's heavier to carry, it lets the kayak sit a bit lower in the water and therefore the, the bow and stern ribs have a, a better opportunity to work effectively. So you get really straight tracking with the advanced frame, although it takes a little bit more to get that momentum. And when you stop paddling, it glides a bit further. These ones, because you're getting lighter, you get a slightly less momentum out of them and a little bit more waggle because these the bow and uh, stern uh, ribs are not as deep in the water, if that makes sense. But they're still excellent kayaks, so don't be feeling like they're going to be you know, terrible, you're going to be missing out on something. They're still really great kayaks, um, amazing performance, especially at that light weight. Okay, so a bit of a different design as I mentioned. So in terms of setup time, oh, I'll just mention this first. This one's the quickest, the sport's the quickest, probably the advanced frame is the next quickest and then the advanced frame ultralight is the third quickest. And part of the reason is it has, has a different setup. Like I said, you've got uh, two chambers here, so you've got two um, main chambers to set up. Then you've actually got a different front here. So you see how there's a, a foot brace in there. Well, that's actually a huge bonus to this one. You know you want a foot brace, you know you want some back support. You can buy a foot brace for the Advanced Frame and the Advanced Frame Sport, but with the Ultralight, it's great because it comes with the foot brace. And then you've got a deck lift to insert. So you can see there's a little pole in there and that pole goes down here and there's an aluminum riser there that you need to sort of slot into the chamber. So the others don't have that. They just have inflatable deck lifts. But inflatables, um, anything inflatable, uh, the PVC is weight. So to reduce the weight here, they've gone for a really simple design, very effective. It just raises that deck up. The other thing you'll notice is the floor. And I've got a picture here of the difference. So this floor is black and it's actually a piece of foam that you roll out inside the kayak. Very lightweight foam, but foam nevertheless. This one's not. This one's like a little PVC airbed. You can actually take it out like you can with the foam floor here. Um, and it's, it's a lovely cushion under your bum. Of course, it's got weight to it, which is why with this one, they've gone to the foam floor. Um, so this one is comfortable, basically. This seat is just a pad here. And then, excuse me, then you've got the, the really soft PVC floor under your bum. This one, you've got a foam pad in your seat. So it's sort of about four or five centimeters high. Gives you that lift that the floor gives you here and it gives you a bit of cushioning, but it's not as soft as this one. So if you're, they both have, however, I'll just point out, they both have the really nice high back seat and it clips in high in the inner tube. The advanced ring, the regular, regular advanced ring, it's like this one. So it's got the soft floor and just a little pad on the seat. So in terms of comfort, uh, I think these ones, the Sport and the regular Advanced Frame are slightly better because they have that cushy floor. Whereas this one, it's it's still very supportive in the back and you've got the foot brace. So in terms of back support, it's still excellent, but it's a little bit harder on the bum. 
Now, I also mentioned that the this kayak has different materials. The advanced remodulates are polyurethane tarpaulin hull instead of a PVC tarpaulin hull. Um, both extremely durable. The reason I'm mentioning that is that that's what makes this kayak a little bit more expensive. So that's the final factor to consider. Uh, the ultralight is the most expensive purely because of the materials involved in manufacturing. That polyurethane uh, is a bit more expensive than the PVC tarpaulin. The advanced frame, the regular advanced frame, the red one is next, and then the advanced frame sport is the cheapest. Now the reason that there's a price differential between the sport and the advanced frame is purely the quantity of materials. Because the advanced frame has a smaller cockpit with combing around it and um, an extra wall in the inner tube, it's simply more material. So the price differential there isn't very much. It's only, I think, about $80 currently, whereas this one is more like $150 more because of that material. So, which is right for you? Well, you have to sit there and weigh up. You have to go, well, how much is, is weight and packing size important to me? How much is performance on the water important to me? How much is uh, being able to go in open ocean and cold climates is important to me? And what am I prepared to pay? Weigh up all those factors and make a decision. But I can tell you, you, you won't go wrong. They're all excellent kayaks. They're an absolute delight to paddle and they're really simple to set up. Or everything in the advanced frame line is ingeniously simple to set up and they're extremely durable all of them are extremely durable kayaks um, absolute delight to paddle you won't go wrong if you've got any questions however please feel free to get in touch with me i'm emily i'm at oz inflatable kayaks